Hey guys, so we're looking at Backbone today. We're looking at how to create your own custom kits in Backbone. So we're looking at trap and hip hop kits and the techniques. So we're looking at layering and stacking the samples. We're looking into the resynthesizer, the effects, decompose, all the techniques, tagging systems, lots to talk about, lots to discuss, let's go. So we're in Backbone and the track we're looking at is a sort of trap, hip hop type of track, 130 tempo, probably more trap type. And we're looking at how we can boost things by adding kick snares, hi-hats, and actually making them bigger, making them fatter. And also how we can actually resample them and use the decompose feature, as well as some of the other cool features that are in Backbone. So this is as far as I've got. So it's just a riff and I need to kind of start building the groove up now. So I'm going to pick really skeletal light parts, hi-hats, kick snares, and then we're going to start boosting them up. So let's get straight into it. So I'm going to look for a hi-hat. Here's backbone. Obviously I can press C3 on the backbone button, the audition button, or I can use my keyboard. It's a really simple hi-hat, but I want to do more to it. I can choose to duplicate layers. We have eight layer slots, so I can really stack these samples. So trap, like other music, like drum and bass, like hip hop, new school breaks, all that kind of stuff, layering is really key. So whatever you see today on this video will be applicable to all genres. So a really cool thing about Backbone is we have full undo and redo capabilities. So if you make a mistake or you, your feed doesn't sound right, you can always come backwards and forwards, which is great. So the hi-hat, I'm actually going to go into the resynth mode. So this is like a, our spectral synthesizer. It's great for actually changing sounds, really transforming sounds like nothing else, to be honest. And you can change anything in it. So what we're going to do is we'll click position. So if I press the hi-hat without resynth and with resynth, you can see that all I've done is change the position markers, but that's actually softened the hat. So you can actually go through and change the position of where it's going to pick up the sound. So it's almost like the change in the start point, which is great, but we have full control over that in conjunction with the purity meter, which I love the purity meter. So that gives me an option of making the sound obviously more pure with it boosted, or I can make it impure, add more harmonics, more grit, more character to a sound really really cool underneath that we have the spectral filter so we can actually create breakpoints and really choose to tweak the sound which is great also there's a handy analyzer which comes really helpful for seeing where low energy and lower end uh, invisible energy might clutter up this hi-hat and maybe add more problems later on in a mix or mastering stage so it's really handy that in one screen we can do sound design we can do filtering spectral filtering we can actually analyze the sample as well and of course we can also open up cubase open the edit channel and change things and see things there as well with the built-in EQ in Cubase, which is great. So this hi-hat with the resynth has really added a nice sort of natural sound to it. I really like that. So turn it off, turn it on. I really like that. It kind of grips it and it's ready to kind of build some sort of like trap, maybe hi-hats, you know, the triplets and stuff. Let's get some of them drawn down in a minute. I'm just going to tweak it a little bit more by adding another layer. So I can then choose to hold alt, duplicate layer. Now the really great thing about Backbone is I can say, okay, I can export this to a desktop channel. And there's our sample, instant resampling. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to choose to re-import it back into a fresh slot in Backbone. So you can actually resample on the fly rapidly, no waiting to render and all that kind of stuff. It's really powerful now. So we can actually go, okay, third slot. So in this third slot is my summed two hi-hats, uh, obviously with the resynth processing. And I can save resynth power now because it will be quite CPU intensive the more you keep doing it and stuff. So it's good to be able to, like any uh, sound design, is to resample and print it. And then you've got it safe for later with the sound already intact on it, with the processing, with the character. So let's have a listen. So I really like that now. Undo it. So I really like that now. So we've got like kind of two in the back and one main one. The good thing about this powerful feature now is I can say, okay, I have my resynced hi hat. It's great. I can go back to the original two. I can either choose to delete the layers or uh, save the layers. It's fine. It's up to you where you go with that. I'm just going to delete one layer and I'm going to leave one open. I'm going to move this one back up to the top. And this layer, so becomes one of two, I'm going to then add effects to that layer. So let's open up the slots, have a click back. We can actually choose to see our different windows just by clicking above that. Now I can say, okay, I can maybe, is it a stereo sample? Yes, it's a stereo sample. I can come back and I can choose to add width just to that 
literally of a hi-hat with the recent on it. So let's have a listen. If I choose to, I can also say, okay, give me some effects. Here's the effect slots. Now, FX2 will be the master effects. So like Cubase, you have your slots that will go into each other. So compression could be into EQ, could be into reverb, or could be into a limiter or a compressor. And FX1 is your auxiliary effects. So they will be dictated by this knob here. So I can say, okay, FX1, choose that there. And I can say, okay, give me the FX1 slots. And they can be chosen in serial or parallel uh, for parallel processing. We even have a mix knob on most effects so we can actually choose to mix them. So let's get a delay in. So I'm gonna choose like a beat delay. So there's our delay, timed. I can do triplets, we can do dotted, sixteenths. I'm gonna move it to that slot. And turn it on. So we're on eighths. Now that's only affecting one of the dual hi-hats that we made. So we've, not only have we resampled and bounced the hi-hat, we've actually just processing just one of the layers as well. So we've got a fatter resynced hi-hat. We've actually added a beat delay to one of the layers. We've left the resampled layer flat. And then of course you can actually choose to maybe high pass filters if you choose to, or we can actually, you know, really create break points and really choose to <laughs> filter at will really it's really really powerful not going to mess around with that too much because it's just a hi-hat right now even in the amplitude window in the edit window we can actually choose to have high pass and low pass as well so that's really helpful so cool so plenty of options for stacking uh, layering and resampling which is what this video is about quite limitless in this program it's amazing to be able to stack and relayer and bounce on the fly with no messing around so happy with them hats got like a little delay on there as well so let's get some hi-hats in some kind of trap midi hi-hats so here's our hi-hats. So I'm really happy with that. Nice resembled hi-hats and that gives me the rhythm track then to add some kicks and snares. So let's have a look at adding some kicks. So I've got one here. It's a really simple sort of ringing kick. Now the first thing you notice about that kick is it's got a metallic sound to it which is cool. It might be desired, it might not be desired. I want to do some sort of sound design now and start changing this sound up. So of course at the top section here we have decompose. So I can then choose to really twist this sound up and take the best parts out of it or even enhance it. So I can deconstruct it or I can reconstruct it. So pre-listen and now when I press my C3, either the audition button or the keyboard, I can choose to solo either the noise or the tonal part which is kind of that metallic -y sound, which is great. So I'm not going to go too mad on this, but I'm going to take away more of the tonal and add more of the noise, so, so it's not too heavy. Something like that. Now, the real powerful thing about Decompose is it's kind of non-destructive because we can full, have full undo and redo capabilities, and I can disable pre-listen to go back to my original sound. And obviously if I want to see what's going on, I can open the edit channel window in Cubase and sort of mix them on the screens so they all fit and stuff and then see what it's doing. So you can see there more tonal adds more beef to that kick. I'm going to kind of go with that a little bit now and take some of the noise back out of there. So now I can commit and apply that. So now that's deconstructed it into two parts and we can see the sounds changed as well. Anything we do in um, these columns, these processing columns, we can actually see it reflected in the waveform, which is great. So let's take it back to where it was. I'm really happy with that. So if I solo the layers, I can just double check what's been done. Now I can resample that back into a slot or over the original first slot. I'm gonna go over the original first slot and leave the noise intact. So now I get the full summed part of the two layers and I get the noise on its own. Now the good thing about having the noise on its own is then I can say, okay, let's start griming up that noise. So I'm gonna choose the bit reduction and you can see the sounds totally change there. So watch that again, let's turn it off, bit reduction, and you can see it's kind of squared off all the waveform, which is great, it's what we want. As we turn the dial, you can see the change in the sound, real time updates, this is really cool. So let's hear what it does. And obviously the distortion level is how much we're actually applying of this grungy bit reduction rate to the sound. There's the original sound. 
and here is imparting more rate reduction more harmonics more drive and distortion which is great and it's just to if i solo it it's just to this layer that's fine so if i unsolo that and listen to it like in context with the other layer we get a really really nice kick and i can choose the levels of how they're mixed together So I'm imparting harmonics now, which is great. And if I choose to carry on any further, I can go to Cubase's media library and I can choose to maybe import from, if I want to, from the, the media bay. I can say, okay, let's look for another kick and then pick one. Kind of like that one. And I can say, okay, straight out of media bay into Backbone, which is crazy. So now I can literally keep going and keep resampling and keep stacking and of course, keep layering. So now we get an even fatter kick. Let's tweak that a bit more by actually going into the actual waveform. So now I can say, okay, let's zoom out a bit more so I can see more of it. And now I'm going to just slightly choose a change the start and end point. And I'm really happy with that. So now I've stacked up a few kicks. I can then go again with the resampling. Export button onto the desktop, into the Cubase project window, or re-import it on the fly, back resampling this layer directly back into Backbone, and then we can go again. And remember you have eight slots with the full undo and redo. Options are absolutely limitless. So let's get these kicks in. So now let's get the kicks in as audio, drag and drop directly into Cubase. Resampled kicks, good to go. So this is our fat resampled sound that we're going for. We've added stacking, layering, effects, and we're using backbones, all built-in processing as well. So let's go to the snare. It's not a bad snare, it's kind of a trap snare. And what we're gonna do with this one is the snare. We're actually gonna decompose this snare. So we want more to work with. Pre-listen mode, solo the noise. We want more of that this time round. Solo the tonal. That's not too bad, we can live with that. If we need to change things, we can also change the cutoff and sensitivity. If we can't quite grab the sounds out where we need to, you've got full control over the sensitivity, the cutoff, the duration. So if you can't quite pick up your tonal noise, you can actually go into these parameters and change that. So I'm really happy now that I've got more of the noise, which is what I want from this sound. Tonal's not too bad. We're gonna commit it and apply. That's really cool. Now if you can see this light here, this is our built-in backbone limiter, which is great. So it's already kind of controlling the sound. So it's kind of great really, because it's kind of putting a, a nice limit on the end of the chain of the backbone sounds. And as the more you stack up samples and the more you resample, the more layers you add, then of course it's going to get driven, but that kind of gives it a sound as well. And you can bypass it if you want to, but then it will overload like that. So it's good to keep things in check. And of course you can actually go to your mix console and turn the main DB volumes down there as well. And you can turn the volumes down in the mix console if you choose to, to give yourself more headroom in the overall output so you're not actually driving things. So I'm really happy with that. I'm going to turn it slightly back up a bit more to get more of a sound. So we have the tonal and we have the noise. So we're going to affect the noise separately. And as you can see here, the level has definitely changed and it's got a lot faster. That's great. I can choose to, again, resample to a slot. We're going to leave the slots as they are for now because we're just going to affect one sound. So we're going to just affect the noise. And we're going to go to the effects and we're going to move the effects slot to one. So this means I'm auxiliary one, I'm only affecting. And I want to add reverb here. So I'm going to go to the time slot and I'm going to press reverb. So that's really just affecting the top layer of that now and leaving the tonal and I can mix it to taste with the level knob and obviously I can choose a room size and the density and I can even change the main time I'm happy with that let's hear how that sounds so far So I've created a reconstructed channel where I can actually go into Backbone so that I can just choose to then drag my samples directly to an audio channel to create audio loops. But with Backbone being audio and MIDI, we can also 
choose to create a MIDI channel track like we did with the hi-hat here. And we can also choose to then play it as MIDI. So that's really great that we have full control over audio and MIDI uh, for expressing and playing instruments in Backbone, which is great. Let's look at adding a second hi-hat. So we have a second hi-hat, which is really cool. Literally just gonna go in there. We're just gonna process it slightly by duplicating the layers. Alternate, alternate, alternate. And that's it with that one. And we're literally gonna just put a compressor on the end. FX2 is our global compressor. We're gonna add a bit of distortion. And we're going to slightly compress it just to control it a bit more. So without it, with it, one layer, two layers, three layers. And have to clear the slow lows and it's all together. Now let's get them hi-hats in. So there's our hi-hats in there. So that's a rough idea of a groove, how we might sample and stack and uh, layer samples to build up a sort of trap groove. Obviously it's applicable to all genres. Quickly, just going to show you how you can actually add a bass and change a bass as well. So I'm going to solo an 808 that I've got here, a really simple 808 and a bass line that I've played. Now it sounds alright, it's quite static and not really, I mean it's quite fat but it's not really moving and, and having the sort of character that I need it to have. So you can see on the waveform, I'm going to go to the resynth now, I'm going to turn the resynth on. So in the resynth I'm going to use the position marker to find the nice peak of where I'm going to start to add a really cool feature I'm going to show you in a second. So maybe something like there, it kind of gets a bit fatter, it, you can see it on the analyzer here which is also the spectral filter. We can see where it's kind of... It's added some beef there, it's added some real, you know, grip where, where I need to be. So now we have a real cool feature called Hold Last Spectrum. So here we can actually hold it in position, so it's really great for getting a more consistent, constant bass sound, for instance, like this. So without it, with it, now you've seen it's not doing much there at all, it's related to the sample edit page. So if you can't hear anything in the recent when you do the last hold spectrum button, then you have to go to your sample edit page. It's related to the end point. So I can then say. Really cool. So I can actually choose to hold it in certain sections where it might really have the character. And then I can go back to the recent page and then start to change this position again. If I want more harmonics so we can actually hear it as well as feel it, purity meter. Obviously more pure, we're not going to get much of the sound. We want some harmonics, so let's dial it back a bit. Great, so without the recent, with the recent from the whole last spectrum, in conjunction with the position and the purity and of course on our sample edit page where we want to actually hold things. Really, really cool. Brings life to bass sounds or any other sound for sound design and you can get to really add some funk, add some consistency, add some depth to the sounds. It's limitless where you go with this and of course with it being backbone, we can then choose to, on our layers section, you know, bang, and you can see what it's done to the sound there. We can actually, re you know, re-layer, re-sample, and keep going, and keep going, and keep going. So let's solve that layer. Let's add some distortion in the bit reduction. And we're going to actually high pass that layer a bit as well, because it needs cleaning up. And then play it in conjunction, and then play it back with the original layer. And of course the limiter is actually getting totally driven, but that's good because I want it to do that. I want it to crash into the limiter so we can actually really change the actual dynamic of the sound. And now let's listen to it in context of what we've already got down.
so there you have it. So there you go, that was Backbone and how to build your own custom hip hop and trap kits. Of course it's applicable to all genres of music. It's a deep program, it's an amazing program, and this is only a snapshot of what it can do. So it's up to you to get Backbone, get involved, happy beat making, enjoy the sound design. Until next time, peace. <laughs>